So this is a really simple method to get specific heat capacity of water with a kettle. I'm going to take three readings of how long it takes for this kettle to boil some water. And this kettle has a power rating of 1850 to 2200 watts. So essentially I'm just going to call it 2000 watts, 2 kilowatts, and I'm going to just use the scale on the side of the kettle which has half a litre, 1 litre and 1.5 litre. And I'm going to boil some water from just tap water temperature which is going to be about room temperature so I'm going to boil it from about 20 degrees to 100 degrees and I'm going to take those three readings and I'm going to plot a graph it's going to be super quick then I'm going to evaluate it and then I'm going to show you a better method for calculating specific heat capacity so let's go So what specific heat capacity is, is it is a measure of the energy needed to raise one kilogram of a substance by one degree Celsius. Now water has a quite high specific heat capacity really. It needs 4,200 joules per kilogram for one degree Celsius. So I'm really interested to see how close and how accurate we're going to be with this method. And then I'm going to evaluate it and talk about how we can be more accurate later. I'm going to take three simple results and I'm going to plot a really super simple graph with just actually those three results on it. And one thing that I'd certainly say for sure right now is that a issue with my graph will be that I won't have enough data points to get really super accurate. So one minute and 44 seconds. One minute and 44 seconds. So that is 104 seconds to boil half a litre of water. A half litre of water is 500 grams or half a kilogram. So I'm just going to call that as it is half a kilogram of water. And I'm going to empty the kettle out and I'll replace it with a, a litre of water. When you're thinking about what a specific heat capacity is, you can think about, well, the word specific means one material. It refers to one material. Heat is the store of energy that we're talking about. And capacity is like saying how much can it hold. So specific heat capacity is like saying how much thermal energy can a particular material hold. And that is per degree Celsius and per kilogram. But the definition that you should use for exams is this one at the bottom here. The energy needed to raise one kilogram of substance by one degree Celsius. And that's what we're doing. We're raising the temperature of the water by supplying energy to it. And this is the equation and you don't need to memorize it for GCSE. You just need to be able to pick it out and use it. The energy change, so the energy supplied to something is equal to the mass times specific heat capacity times by the temperature change. Um, or we can write this in algebra, delta, that's the funny triangle thing, delta E is equal to mass times specific heat capacity times delta, the change in temperature. So those triangles, those deltas just mean change in. And you need to be able to rearrange this type of equation into all the different forms. So here they are. So the mass is the energy change divided by the specific heat capacity times the temperature change. Or specific heat capacity is energy change over mass times temperature change. And that's the one we're going to use in a moment. And then if it's for temperature change, then energy change is on the top and mass times specific heat capacity is on the bottom. So you can see then all of these, all of these involve delta E, the energy change being on the top, because the way you should learn to rearrange is by doing the inverse operations of things. So if you want to move something across, it goes to the bottom of a new fraction and you get this one, delta T over MC. and start it again. And the way in which I'm going to calculate the energy supplied to the water is just by using the power of the kettle and multiplying by the time taken. The kettle is 2000 watts and the time was 104 seconds. So the energy supplied is the power multiplied by the time. So here we've got our two equations we're going to use. Our equation for specific heat capacity, C is delta E over M delta T, and our equation for energy, that's the energy supplied, which is power times time, PT. The power of the kettle was 2000 watts. And for our first reading, we've got 104 seconds. So the total energy supplied to the water in those 104 seconds is going to be 208000 joules. We've just worked out the energy supplied and we're going to use that value to calculate the specific heat capacity by using this equation here on the left hand side so let's just substitute those numbers in now we know our energy two zero eight and three more zeros over the mass now that was for half a kilogram five multiplied by the temperature change which was from 20 degrees to 100 degrees so the temperature change was 80. then once you've got the number substituted in reach for the calculator so that one comes out of 5200 joules per kilogram per degree celsius 
as I'm working, I'm thinking about my evaluative points. And I'm thinking that actually, this kettle was hot when I put the water in. So that's something that is different from the second run compared to the first run. So three minutes and two seconds, so that's 182 seconds. So now I have one and a half litres or 1.5 kilograms. And I'm just gonna be plotting a graph in Excel to hopefully give me a gradient equal to the specific heat capacity. Now I could have done just one reading of this and used energy divided by mass time temperature change to give me the specific heat capacity. But that will give me less accuracy than actually go ahead and plotting a graph. So I wanna make it really clear about this idea of using a gradient to give you a result. Our equation is specific heat capacity is the energy supplied over the mass times the temperature change. Now that's our equation for specific heat capacity. And what we're going to do then is we're going to plot energy, energy supplied on the y-axis and mass times temperature change on the x-axis. Now what that means is that we should get a line going through the origin with a gradient of the specific heat capacity. Our gradient is the rise over the run. And that's what all gradients are. How steep is the line? How far up does it go compared to how far across it goes? So in this case, our gradient, our rise over the run is E over M delta T, and that's the same as our equation for specific heat capacity. Safety-wise, if you do want to do this, then just be aware that you've got quite a lot of hot water there. If you've got a high temperature and you've got a high mass, then you're gonna have quite a lot of energy stored in there, and that's gonna do you damage if you were to get that on your skin. If you do spill hot water on yourself, then you should be making sure that you put that straight underneath a cold tap and run it for several minutes. So that's four minutes and five seconds, which is 245 seconds. There we go, I have a straight line and... So there we go, I have a straight line and they look like there's three points are pretty much on that straight line and the gradient of that straight line is 3,500. So it's not a million miles away, but it's not really perfect, is it? Let's face facts. Here's the results here then, and this is the graph such as it is. Energy on the y-axis, mass time temperature change on the x-axis. And you can actually use these results here at the top to go ahead and work out specific heat capacities for each of these three masses. Or of course you could use them to plot this graph, but a graph with only three points is never gonna be as accurate as a graph with more. One of the biggest issues here with this graph is actually that it should go through the origin. And you can see that it does actually have a y-intercept. So that is a problem that I've had with these three results. And you can see that although they do look like they're quite close to the line of best fit, well actually if I just use these ones, I'd have a much steeper line. And that would have given me a more accurate specific heat capacity. So the issue that I've had here is not having enough data points. And I really wanted you to appreciate this, that in physics, the more data points we have, the more accuracy we can get. Why not go ahead and pause the video and use all this data up here to calculate some values of specific heat capacity. So how can we improve that? Well, certainly what we could use straight away is something with a more accurate way of measuring the volume of water. We don't need to use a scale, but we certainly should have used something with more, with a higher resolution than every half litre. That is a very inaccurate way to have measured the mass of water in our kettle there. I have three results here, and that isn't very many. Certainly I could have taken readings for every quarter of a kilogram, every 0.25 kilograms, and I would have had twice as many readings, and I would have a much better defined line of best fit here. But I didn't get a million miles away. 3,500 joules per kilogram per degree Celsius is not a million miles away. The power of this kettle was just a range, so I pretty much just guessed it to be about 2000 watts, which is generally what the power of a kettle is. Now, there's a much better way to calculate electrical power, and hence the electrical energy supplied to something, and that's coming up in a later video. But hopefully from this you get the idea that more mass, you need more energy to heat it by the same temperature rise. Another improvement is that I just kind of guessed what the temperature of the water out of the tap was. Actually that water was probably quite a bit colder than 20 degrees Celsius. I really should have used a thermometer to check. I do actually have one here, so why not? We'll just quickly see what the temperature of the tap water actually was. Now, in fact, it comes out at 22 degrees Celsius. So I have raised that by less than what I've actually put. That change gets us closer, but it gets us still nowhere near 4,200. I would expect for this experiment for us to have supplied more energy to the water than actually was retained in its thermal store. So I really feel like there's been something going quite considerably wrong with this practical, with my estimation probably of the power. 
But as I said, this is a good one for just quickly evaluating and figuring out what we can improve on this. Now when we do this experiment properly in the lab, what we're actually going to use is a full setup to allow us to measure the potential difference and the current and hence calculate the actual power supplied either to a kettle or as I'm going to do with some blocks of aluminium. Another improvement you could use would be to use a joule meter, something that you can plug into the mains and it will actually measure the energy supplied to the kettle. And that would give us probably a more accurate measurement of the energy that we've supplied to that hot water. So quite a lot wrong with this experiment, but quite a lot right. So hopefully you got some idea from this of what a specific heat capacity is. It's a measure of the energy required to raise one kilogram of a material by one degree Celsius. We got within about sort of 10, 12% of the specific heat capacity of water just with a really quick setup in, well, it's taken me 20 minutes to get those results and analyze them.